this is Dennis and whoops <laughs> um, got another video for you today holy cow have my videos been generating a lot of comments lately and the problem is um, they're not a lot of them are not showing up in my uh, inbox anymore you know with gmails I'm not sure what's going on but I've uh, been having to go to YouTube itself every day and check in the comments and since there's been so many coming in I figure I should read most of them to you know respond to them uh, so the first one is from hamrad88 Tom Styles on my um, MFJ 1020C um, the video that I just posted right I think it was yeah last, last night where I did that experiment that he suggested um, he writes love the experimenting thanks for the mention you're welcome unfortunately van conditions have been terrible lately at least for me check out my latest video to see what I mean well like I uh, well for him I didn't uh, respond um, so far band conditions haven't been too bad for me uh, just got home from work so I'm not sure how they are today just gonna have to wait and see uh, how that looks um, Thomas ally um, in response to my uh, RF interference video asks um, if this if the interference is happening on AM and FM and I'm John Mark here with Bonnie Petrie this is with um FM's or AM seems alright except for the interference that's coming from the monitor as far as I can tell well there's a little bit of something here yeah. Here's a lease agreement with the city of Fond du Lac concerning yeah. FM seems normal. It's just on shortwave. This doesn't seem so bad as it did yesterday, but when I shot it, it was later in the evening, so. I don't know if it has to do with the interference or not, but uh, I'm going to be doing a little bit of experimenting with my antenna outside tonight to see how that works and if anything helps. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, now for the, the BBC on my on the Yesu FRG7 video Thomas Ally wrote, I've been trying to get the BBC on shortwave for a while with my limited setup, but lately I've have some sort of interference all over especially on AM and FM is really bad not really sure if more stations are going digital here causing the problem or what as I just noticed it recently hard to say um, it might not be the stations themselves it might be just you know you have neighbors with uh, devices that are causing electrical interference or it might be something in the house or could be power lines or um, um, broadband cable um, who knows it uh, it could be anything um, like me um, you're just gonna have to try going around and trying out to see what could be causing the interference um, far too many gadgets I like that name he wrote uh, for the RF interference video I simplifies I've been down the same road once it was a neighbor's satellite receiver he got a new one once it was a transformer on a pole near my house power company fixed another time it was a USB power adapter replaced it then it was a TV that was turned off but it only interfered when an HDMI cable is connected disconnected the cable use the process of elimination uh, yeah that's what I'm gonna try doing trying to figure out uh, what it is uh, he suggests First, try multiple receivers to make sure it's not the radio. Well, that I know for sure it's not the radio because I pick it up on all the radios. Then turn off individual AC circuits in your home and listen for the results. That's going to be a little iffy. Um, I don't really want to do that because my dad's on oxygen and I don't want to, you know, shut off the power and then, you know, he's sitting there without oxygen. Don't really want to use one of the cans of... Uh, you know the big cans of air because you know use that when he travels so uh, um, I think what I might do instead is just um, you know if it's inside the house uh, just you know grab like my little uh, let's see here my little Texan portable here 
put it on AM and just go around the house trying to end a shortwave and try to find out, you know, if it's coming from inside the house. If it's coming from upstairs, well, there's nothing I can do about it because, you know, that's the neighbors, so. But if it's, you know, outside being caused by, like, say, whatever that is, they installed next to that power pole down the street, uh, like, two years ago. That's my suspicion as to where the interference is coming from, but I can't really say for sure until I go around trying to, you know, detect where it's coming from. Let's see here. You can you continue to write, uh, if you find the noisy circuit, turn it back on and start unplugging things on that line until the noise stops. If that doesn't work, then a portable receiver outside and walk different locations, oh, different directions, noting where it's strongest, then see whether it's all the time or just certain times with patience you can find it. Also check out this video of a radio expert with a similar problem and his solution. Um, good luck. And the video that he posted is from Ray from uh, Radio Workshop. I've been checking out his videos lately. I really like the guy. Um, he's a gentleman from, uh, from the UK and he does uh, videos on vintage radios and stuff like that. And you know, I just love the British sense of humor and, you know, the way they talk and the way they call stuff. Like, um, instead of calling them vacuum tubes, they call them valves, which I don't know why I get a kick out of that. I just do. But, um, if you haven't checked out his channel, uh, Radio Workshop, go and check it out. Um, let's see here. Continue with the comments. Uh, far too many gadgets also wrote on the uh, MFJ 1020C test video that I did. The MFJ 1020 doesn't get good reviews using the supplied whip antenna, but some sources say it works well with the length of the wire if the wire is run outside away from noise sources. I've seen something about that, and uh, for example, see, and he's got this uh, link here, and I've seen something about that, and I'm not quite sure, you know, how you go about doing that because it's just got the the uh, the co coax connectors on the back of the the radio. I won't. I I don't quite get how exactly it would go with you know just wire itself directly to this. I'll have to do some uh, research and see if I can figure that out. I've also heard that you can use it as a antenna tuner or amplifier or whatever. So I don't know. I might try playing around with that to see if it works. Uh, let's see here. For the RF interference video, Andy Tobin wrote, Sounds like a pulsating or cycling interference. That's what I thought. It must be something local or within your home. Um, if it's within the house here, it might be easy to track down. If it's outside, that's going to be a little bit trickier. Try unplugging things in your home. Um, well, I know for sure it's not coming from my room because... Um, I've tried that before where I've unplugged everything except for the radios and it's still getting the interference. Um, although the RF noise in my room has dropped a bit ever since I got rid of the uh, the uh, broadband cable modem and the router since I got that out of here that's uh, that's helped out big time so um, but like I said I'll be searching around with this and trying to pinpoint the source, the source of interference. Uh, let's see here. He, he continues saying that he has no idea what it might be, but check all things electrical, including adapters. Yeah, that much I've heard. The wall warts, those can be notorious for causing noise. Uh, Hamrad88 says the music for my intro is too loud. Yeah, uh, I'll have to get around to fixing that. I've been kind of lazy, um, but I'll get that taken care of. Um... Greg Hammond shortwave radio for the um, the video that I shot uh, with my antenna uh, regarding the ugly Valen wrote um, the ugly Valen is quite effective but only a relatively narrow band of frequencies of a few megahertz wide uh, outside its optimal frequency its performance drops off the ugly Valen is a tuned circuit that has inductance from the coil from the coil's windings and the capacitance of the coil turns as they lay side by side. The fewer turns that you have, the more effective on higher frequencies it will be, but less effective at lower frequencies. The converse is also true. More turns will improve low frequencies but sacrifice at the top end. Uh, in your case, the turns are not well wound, so its effectiveness or whether it works at all cannot be sure. 
if this is old pre-use coax that been that's been out in the elements for some time a length this long could be quite lossy a choir signal using this coax may not be from the bound but instead just be from lossy feed line um, for example a feed line that is so lossy that 75% of the signal is lost will pass enough signal to hear the stronger stations but the perceived noise floor which starts off weaker will be will seem to become very quiet on the surface less noise sounds like an improvement until it's realized that you also can not hear the very weak DX signals I went on to explain this one I did reply to um, I explained that the um, the, uh, what I call the crappy coax I have wrapped around um, the feed line. That's not the feed line itself. I just have it wrapped around. Um, basically, I had like two windings. Uh, one I pulled off and oddly enough that seems to have cut down on interference on uh, on the, the bands. I'm not sure if they had anything to do with it or not or if it was just a coincidence. Um, but what I did leave on there and I might make a video showing that um, I have wrapped around like two or three times and then I got running um, to a pipe that I've got uh, driven into the ground. Um, not sure if that's going to make any difference or not. Uh, according to Greg with his reply, ah, okay, I see now in this case with it not connected to the feed line, it just doesn't work. Which, you know, that could be... Uh, more than likely he is right because Greg knows what he's talking about <laughs> um, so like I said I'm going to be going out after this video and experimenting a little bit and see you know if uh, what you know works and what doesn't um, what definitely seems to have worked is um, that trick that uh, my brother showed me where we wrapped the uh, wire around the, the coax itself and then we got running um, to the pipe that uh, definitely seems to have helped. Um, but like I said, I'm going to be experimenting and hunting down sources of interference. Um, let's see here. I know there was another one in here. Oh yeah, it's about the MFJ-1020C versus the my outdoor antenna. Um, <laughs> uh, Greg and Spectre Oz have been going uh, back and forth, back and forth. Um, um, about, uh, well, it's too long of a conversation. It's in the comments if you want to see what they've all been saying. But uh, that's some of the comments I've been receiving on videos uh, just in the last day. But, you know, <laughs> I think, how many videos did I make yesterday? It's like three or four. Let's see, one, two, three four yeah four videos yesterday so should be surprised i've been getting all these comments so um thank you to everybody who's been watching my videos i uh, really appreciate it hold on mouth getting a little dry i really appreciate it i thank you everyone for your comments and suggestions uh keep them coming because uh every every little bit helps and uh, like i said i'll be playing around some more with my antenna t today and trying to track down an interference and see if we can make things uh, better. Um, like I mentioned on the video last night, luckily the interference doesn't seem to really start until the lower end of the 5 megahertz uh, range on down, so that's not too bad. Um, obviously I hear the stronger si signals, but the weaker signals... Um, are getting knocked out so hopefully I can take care of this um, but the uh, video is getting long so <laughs> um, hope you guys enjoyed the video and as always peace and all that good stuff Beep.